shortstop. Number 17, Gavin Clem, playing center field. Number 23, Caleb Sweet, playing third base. Number 12, Braden Erickson, is pitching. Number zero, Owen Miller, is in left field. Number 52, Bretton Gomer is playing first base. Number seven, Derek Duncan is at second base. Number nine, Andrew Houghton is catching. Number 24, Oscar Solano is playing right field. And now for your Rochester Zebras, leading off and playing shortstop, Tarek McLaughlin. Batting second, playing center field, Ethan Medina. Batting third and playing right field, Evan Elliott. Batting fourth, playing third base, Tanner Reinhardt. At first base tonight and batting fifth is Aaron Huffman. Batting sixth and catching, Jake Seifert. Batting seventh and playing second base, Luke Hunnings. Playing left field and batting eighth, Hunter Campbell. And pitching in the ninth position is Braden Zink. Gavin Young, number 10, will be dh and for it. Hey, can you uh, find the uh, national anthem? All right, so there's, there are your lineups. Again, Pioneer going with Couch, Clem, and Sweet, the top three. Erickson, Miller, and Gomer, the middle three. Duncan, Houghton, and Solano, the bottom three. Rochester going with McLaughlin, Medina, and Elliott, the top three. Reinerts, Huffman, and Cypher, the middle three. Hunting, Campbell, and Young, the bottom three. Uh, Ro Pioneer is not using a DH. Rochester is. Young is the DH batting ninth, and Zink, the pitcher, is being DH'd four. He's the flex player. These teams played a nutty game in Royal Center last year. Rochester won that game 19-17. to That was the game. Rochester hit nine home runs as a team all year last year. I think five of them were in that game, and Kyle Reinhardt's hit three. Pioneer hit three grand slams in that game, and they lost. But that's a smaller ballpark than this ballpark. But again, the wind is going to be the factor in this game. Again, Pioneer coming off a 2 nothing loss to Delphi on Monday, and they only had one hit the entire game. Braden Erickson had that hit. And so that's that's another one of the big headlines in this game. Erickson is on the mound, and he is he was a phenom last year. Erickson. Uh, looking at his pitching numbers, they are outstanding. He is... Uh, 13 strikeouts in six and a third innings. In six and a third innings, he allowed three hits, two runs. Both are in, He's walked three and struck out 13. He struck out 13 of the 25 batters he's faced, more than half. And he's faced a, facing a Rochester team that's pretty good at getting their bat on the ball. Josh Hardy is the pioneer coach. He's in his second year. Corey Good is the Rochester coach. He's in his eighth year. And I believe we are under a wind advisory until 8 p.m., so. What was the old David Letterman line? Hold on to your wigs and keys. On Tuesday in their win over Plymouth, 
Tarek McLaughlin through the first five innings, and Ethan Medina through the final two innings. Tarek is the only guy who's pitched in both games. So I think it's fair to say we're not going to see Tarek today. This is Braden Zink's first pitching performance of this season. Talked with Corey Good before the year, and he talked about having something like 12 different bullpens going during the kind of the indoor practice sessions. I mean, he, he thinks most of the guys in this junior class have can pitch at least a little bit, but it would appear to be that Aaron Huffman and Tarek McLaughlin are Rochester's top two pitchers as of right now, the guys who will see the action once we get into conference play and once we get into the postseason. This is the beginning of a pretty busy period for the Zebras. They host Pioneer today. They host Culver Academy tomorrow. They are at Caston Saturday morning at 11 a.m. They are at Northwestern on Monday in a makeup game from an earlier rainout. And then they begin TRC play coming up next Wednesday, the 20th, when they're at Whitco. For the Pioneers, Caden Couch. All right, we're ready to go. It'll be Couch, Clem, and Sweet due for Pioneer here in the top of the first. First pitch of the game from Zink to Couch is fouled off. Pioneer was one of four teams who shared the Hoosier North title last year. They had a great year. Lost in the sectional final to Southwood, who was ranked number one. Pitch by Zink. Strike two called. Two right? Yeah, hit two. Hit. Hit strike. See what it Pitch again by Zink. Got him looking. Fastball. Good start. Poor Braden Zink. Number 17, Gavin Clem. That'll bring up Gavin Clem. Gavin hitting 444 in the young season. He's four for nine. Pitch is low for a ball. You can hear the wind, and we're in the press box here. You can. You're hearing wind gusts up to 50 miles an hour today. Inside. 2-0. Oh. Again, seemingly more of a crosswind. Gavin Clement will wipe a little bit of dust out of his eyes. You don't have to hit set, I don't think, unless you want to set it back to his Ball three. Good man. You're learning, aren't you? Huh? They're learning. We're learning together, too. Yes. We're learning together. Braden got in 18 innings on the varsity mound last year as he throws a strike. He had 28 strikeouts in those 18 innings. That's the good news. The bad news, he had 27 walks in those 18 innings as well. And the count is now full. Twenty-eight walks plus another four hit batters on top of that. Again, Rochester played about two hundred innings of baseball last year when you count regular season plus postseason. And Brock Beeler and Kyle Reiner's pitched about 91 of those 200 innings. So a lot of innings you got to replace. And that pitch is way high and goes to the backstop. Cypher will have to chase it down. Clem to first with a base on balls. Ball to zero. 
That'll bring up Caleb Sweet. Caleb hitting 222 on the young season with one RBI. She's two for nine. Caleb, a three-sport athlete, football, basketball, and baseball. Wild throw on the pickoff attempt. Huffman will chase it down. Clem moves up to second. That'll be an E1. Now batting number 23, Caleb Sweet. He was throwing the first base. He didn't throw the ball. Okay. Both of Plymouth's runs on Tuesday came in the first inning off McLaughlin. They were both unearned. Swing and a miss. Look like he kind of tied him up with a fastball there. 0 and 1. Again, um, Beeler's ERA was 2.51 last year. Reinhardt's was 2.84, and they pitched about 40% of all, of all the innings. Swing and a miss. About 40% of all the innings and about, what, 95% of all the innings in the confer in conference and postseason games. Oh and 2 A foul ball. Pitch way high. Cypher able to flag it down. One and two. Again, with McLaughlin, Medina, Huffman, and Zink, you've got four juniors who already have a lot of experience at the varsity level. Breaking ball blocked by Cypher in the dirt, and the count is two and two. Got him looking. Now batting pitcher, Braden Erickson. I don't know. Sweet looked like he might have been fooled there. Good late movement on that pitch by Zink. So a runner at second, two outs, and to bring up Braden Erickson. Pioneer had one hit in that game against Delphi the other day, and Erickson had the hit. Three for six on the young season, hitting 500. And of his three hits, two of them are for extra bases. He's got a single, a double, a homer, and he's, like we said, four RBIs and six at-bats. That's a... <laughs> it's a pretty good ratio. Strike. Braden also plays basketball for Coach McKegg and the Panthers, but I asked him about it. He goes, my sport's baseball. He goes, I love it. Oh and 2 Got him looking. Erickson didn't like that call. The Zebras will take it for Pioneer in the top of the first. No runs, no hits, one error, one left at the end of half an inning. Pioneer 0 and Rochester 0, and we'll be right back on RTC TV 4. Here at Bob Copeland Field, it'll be McLaughlin, Medina, and Elliott due for the Zebras against Erickson and the Panthers here in the bottom of the first. Again, we saw Braden pitch against Caston last year, and he had, it's not just the velocity, but it's just kind of the pitching instincts that he has 
I mean, he was a freshman, but he looked like a senior out there. And I'm really curious to see how the Zebras do against him. Now batting, Tarek McLaughlin. First pitch from Erickson to McLaughlin. Inside. Tarek one for six on the season. Turns on that one. Hits a well to right. It's foul and it's caught. Nice catch. Nice running catch by Oscar Solano out in right field. Now batting center fielder Ethan Medina. Let her bring up Ethan Medina. Ethan had two hits and they went over Plymouth on Tuesday. Inside. Ethan hitting 625 on the young season. Five for eight with an RBI. Way inside, 2-0. Elliott on deck. Grounder, right side, foul. Pitch. Foul ball, two and two. Pitch is low. Ball three. Full count. Ethan kind of hangs over home plate. All all. Ethan at 288 last year with a 438 on base percentage. Grounder to short. Throw to first. Nice dig by Gomer. Over at first. Two up, two down. So Couch charged that one up. It wasn't a great throw, but Brenton Gomer with a nice dig at first. That'll bring up Evan Elliott. Evan is the lone senior on this team, and he's up to a great start. He's four for eight. Breaking ball inside. Got a double, a homer, and five RBIs. Hit that home run at Delphi last week, and that was a no-doubter. Fly ball to left. In foul territory and no play. One and one. I asked Evan about kind of he has kind of a philosophical view on the game. He, you know, he is kind of a team leader. He, he he kind of reminds the guys that baseball is a game of failure. You might strike out, but you might get another chance later on in the game. You just have to erase that bad memory from your mind as that ball is fouled out, one and two. You know, as Corey Good after the Delphi game, he talked about those first three names on the line of McLaughlin, Medina, and Elliott. Those, that was the easy part of his job. He goes, he knew he, he knew he wanted those three in those spots because they were they hit there last year as uh, Erickson gets Elliott to swing and miss, strike three, and that retires the side. 
Rochester in the bottom of the first. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left at the end of one. It's Rochester zero and Pioneer zero. We'll be back on our TC TV four. Owen Miller is the left fielder. Owen hitting 300 on the young season. He's three for 10. He's tied for the team lead in RBIs with four. And he's also scored three runs. He has three hits, all of them for extra bases, two doubles and a homer. Did he chase? Ball strike. Strike. He didn't. He didn't chase. 0-2 is the count. Pitch is low. Breaking ball. The one two. Got him off balance, fouled it off. One two pitch. Got him. Looks like he went with some high heat there. Strikeout number four for Braden Zink. And that'll bring up Brenton Gomer. Gomer's three for twelve on the young season with three RBIs, hitting two fifty. Brenza Jr. Really got a lot of playing time as the season progressed last year. He's heading the count here, 1-0. and Swing and a miss, 1-1. One one. What's that? That's a light Wind blowing. Did you say that? We might be out. Power outage. Airlines are getting jostled quite a bit by these winds. Fouled off one and two. Today is the birthday of one of my favorite baseball players of all time. Happy 56th birthday, Greg Maddox. 300 wins, three. Over 3,000 strikeouts. I think he won 18 gold gloves. He's the greatest fielding pitcher of all time, probably. Two two pitch. Foul ball. Basketball player? Yes, I remember. He's like, this is a good duck. See what this kid's doing with two strikes? He's choking up. He's like way up on the bat. Yep, the water bat. A 2 2 pitch from Zink to Gomer. High. It looked like Gomer's knees buckled a little bit, but the pitch was high, and the count is now full. Gomer pausing a moment. Looked like some dirt got in his eyes. Fouled off. Pioneers. Two wins are over Faith Christian and Clinton Central. Both 1A team. Another... They lost to Delphi two to nothing on Monday. That's the only game they played that was not against a one A team. Bring it in on this 
Their other loss was to Tri County. That was a that was to Tri County, fourteen to one in five innings. Three two pitch. Got him looking with a breaking ball. Now batting second baseman Derek Duncan. Brain Zing not afraid to throw a 3 2 breaking ball. And that'll bring up the second baseman, Derek Duncan. First pitch is a strike. Duncan hitting 333 in the young year season, three for nine, two RBIs. The 0 1 pitch. Ball. It's that consistent command of the breaking ball that will I think really tell what kind of season Braden Zink has. So far, pretty good today. He struck out four batters in a row. He struck out five of the six batters he's faced. The one two. Fastball on the dirt, two and two. Got a track meet going across the parking lot. Rochester's hosting Whitco today and track. The boys' golf team opening up their season. Rochester and Tippecanoe Valley at Culver Academy in a three-way nine-hole match. The Academy course, three and two. Three-two pitch. Fouled off. Got Reiners to third, McLaughlin at short, Hunting at second. Huffman over at first. We've seen Hunting play first base, second base, and shortstop this year. That pitch is inside. That's a base on balls. Runner at first, two outs for the catcher, Andrew Helton. Now batting catcher, Andrew Helton. Campbell Medina and the Elliot Campbell Medina and Elliot in the outfield left center and right respectively swing and a miss cipher catching zinc Pioneer went 14 and 10 for Josh Hardy in his first season as coach last year they went eight and four in the Hoosier North and that crazy log jam there was at the end of the conference season and they were able to share it with North Judson and Laville and Winnemac. Swing and a miss, so and two. Pioneer then beat West Central and North Miami in the sectional before losing four to nothing to Southwood on Memorial Day in the sectional final. Oh, who's down there? Who's down there? What? Is he really? Yeah. Oh, to yell at him. 0-2 pitch. Oh. Ball. They got no hit by Carson Rich of Southwood in last year's sectional final. Over at Caston. The 0-2 pitch from Zink. Fly ball to center. Coming in on it is Medina. Can he get there? Yes. Side retired. Helton flies out to center to retire the side. For, Racha, for Pioneer in the top of the second. No runs, no hits. One error, one left. 
We go to the bottom of the second. No score between Rochester and Pioneer. You're watching RTC TV4. First pitch from Erickson to Reinhardt's. Line drive, base hit to left. Tanner Reinhardt's a talented young freshman hitter. He didn't he didn't even allow me the fact to say that he's five he was five for seven on the young season. Now he's six for eight. And that'll bring up Aaron Huffman. Aaron playing first base today. Throw to first. Reinhardt's is back. Looks like a slider. Low and away. Ball one. It's a foul ball. One and one is the count. Another former Cubs pitcher's birthday is today, Kyle Farnsworth. Two and one. Today is Pete Rose's birthday. 81 years old, Pete Rose is today. Two one pitch. Dropped by the catcher. Helton couldn't hang on and Reinerts will advance. We'll call that a pass ball. Three one strike. See if Huffman can at least move the runner over. That pitch is outside. It's a base on balls. The ball gets away. Reiner's going to try for third, and he's safe easily. That's a walk and a pass ball. Good base running by Reinerts. He was on his toes. That ball didn't get too far away from Helton, but it got far away enough that he could advance. Now batting catcher, Jake Cipher. That'll bring up the sophomore catcher, Jake Cipher. Pitches a strike. There he goes. Huffman, and he'll steal the bag. Players call me a bald. They call you baldy now? Yeah, like no? street. Like, like, oh, like, like me? Like you and. Huh? Just because that's why I keep my hat on. Here, you keep your hat on. One and one now, the count to Cypher. Like Tony. Like Tony. Like Tony. Yeah. All the best for you. Grounder, right side. Throws to first. In time. Cypher is out. On the play, Reinert scores, and Huffman advances to third. So Cypher makes the first out of the inning, but he gets an RBI, and Rochester leads one to nothing. And not only that, second baseman, Luke Hunting. but Huffman is at third with one out. Hunting takes low. Luke hitting 167 so far in the season. He's one for six. And Helton calls timeout. He's going to talk with Erickson. And this conversation, I believe, is going to involve Caleb Sweet as well. You're a good man, Josh. You're a good man. I'm his umpire. 
some young guy behind the plate. Yeah. The 1-0 pitch. And that ball is dropped. Here comes Huffman, and he will score. Pass ball. And the Zebras take a 2-0 lead. The pitch was a ball. The count is now 2-0. Foul ball. There you go. Then another strike. There you go. Good man. Ball three. Too high, right? Yeah, it was too high. And Wyatt Zider graduated last year. He. He was their catcher, and Pioneer didn't have to worry about that catcher position very often. That pitch is way up and in, and Hunting draws a base on balls. Ball goes to the backstop, so Hunting will take a, will hustle down. He'll take a wide turn at first, but he'll hold there. Runner at first with one out for Hunter Campbell. Now batting left fielder, Hunter Campbell. See, I call Hunter late. Like Layman, Bryce Layman. Is that what it is? Huh? Yeah. Uh, Layman, there's one, right? Old, the old student. Yes, my old student. That's right. I remember him. He played right field. Jammed him, foul ball, and Helton makes the catch. Well, the wind isn't as bad as it was when the game started. Because, again, anything, any pop-up is going to be an adventure today, but Helton handled that fine. First pitch to Gavin Young is fouled off, 0-1. You call him Brandy? Yeah, after his mom. After his mom, huh? Yeah. Throw to first, it gets away. Hunting gets up. He's going to try to advance. He's safe. It'll be an error on the pitcher, Erickson. Runner at second, two outs. Foul ball. Gavin's a sophomore. Gavin really came on at the end of last year. Leonard to left. Is that caught? No, it's not caught. It's trapped out in left field. Hunting was running on the play. He'll score easily. Two out RBI single for Gavin Young. And it is now three to nothing. Now batting leadoff hitter, Terry McLaughlin. I'll bring up Terry McLaughlin. Strike. Headed for second is Gavin Young, and he steals it. Runner at second, two outs. Let's see if this changes Erickson's strategy now that first base is open. As he follows as McLaughlin follows that one off, 0-2. No, he's not gonna he's not gonna pitch around him now. Not not that now that he's having the count 0-2. Of course that's part of the issue that you're gonna deal with when you face the zebras. You can't pitch around McLaughlin because Medina and Elliott are excellent hitters as well. That one is high, one and two.
That one in the dirt. Helton can't block it. And on his way to third is Gavin Young. Runner at third with two outs. Let me pressure on Helton to block another breaking ball if it goes in the dirt. Not that there's a runner at third. Pitch high and outside, three and two. Two singles and two walks this inning. Pitch inside, base on balls. McLaughlin was down on the count 0 and 2. He came back to draw a walk. The runners on the corners with two out for Ethan Medina. Now batting, number four, Ethan Medina. Erickson had walked three in six and two thirds innings. Coming into the three and six and one third innings coming into this game, he's walked three in this inning. And there's going to be a mound meeting. meeting. I'd be curious to know how much was that conversation about pitching to Medina and how much of that will be on how do you keep Tarek McLaughlin over at first base, or do you? Pitches outside. McLaughlin has a big lead, but he doesn't try and steal there. Let's see if Tarek tries to go here. I kind of thought Medina might be taking a pitch just to let to give Tarek a chance to steal. Throw to first, safe. Josh is here with us in the booth, so there's no lack of entertainment. And that pitch is dropped. Young will come in and score. McLaughlin's going to try for third, and I'll make it. Good base running by Tarek. Let's pass ball. And Rochester now leads it four to nothing. Medina heading the count 2-0. and oh. Fouled off. Well, I was just going to say, I wonder if Erickson will be aggressive down in the count 2-0 and oh, with first base open and a right-handed hitter on deck, but he, he went with the heat there, and Medina just got a piece. Outside, 3-1. and one. Well, there's so much about. There's so much when you talk about what separates the good teams from the great teams. It's base running is so much of a factor. Ground ball to second. Throws to first in time for the out. A nice job by Derek Duncan. But that retires the side. Rochester scores four runs in the bottom of the second on two hits. There was one error and one left. At the end of two innings, Rochester leads Pioneer 4 to nothing. We'll be right back on RTC TV 4. Oscar Solano is hitting 250 on the young season. He's 2 for 8. Three RBIs. First pitch from Zink. Strike. It seems like Zink has good late movement on his stuff.
I'm not sure Pioneer is reading him very well. Again, this is the ninth batter, so it'll be second time through the order after Solano. So we'll see if they make the what adjustments they make. Oscar Solano, three-sport athlete, football, basketball, and baseball. Pitches inside. Pioneer beat Logan Sport in basketball earlier this year. I believe that's like it was the like first time in over 40 years they had done that, and Oscar hit the game-winning free throw in that game. He had a great senior year on the football field as well. A defensive line, offensive and defensive lines, but especially in the defensive line. One and two is the count. Pitch by Zink. Soft floater and Zink makes a diving catch. Nice play by Braden. Now batting leadoff hitter, Caden Couch. Again, that was, you know, sometimes, you know, catchers or your pitchers catch pop ups in high school baseball you wouldn't see if you were watching a big league game, but that was I think Braden kinda had to. I mean it wasn't hit very high and he had a great diving catch. In honor of the birthday boy Greg Maddox who won eighteen gold gloves. See, I knew it would come around. I, that's why I mentioned these, me and my trivia. 0-1 oh, the count. Swing and a miss to breaking ball, 0-2. Oh, we'll be back here at Bob Copeland Field tomorrow when the Zebras host Culver Academy. Another 5 p.m. start. 0-2. Oh, Foul ball. Count hangs at 0-2. Oh, Couch struck out looking his first time up. Two walks, five strikeouts so far through two and a third innings for Zink. Grounder gets past Zink. Hunting has it. And he throws to Huffman for the out. Two up, two down here in the third. Now batting number 17, Gavin Clem. And that'll bring up center fielder Gavin Clem. Clem walked his first time up. He's the only pioneer player to get into scoring position. First pitch is low. It looked like more of a breaking ball. Hi. Who's that? Hi, Palmer. How you doing? One thing you notice when you watch Zing is he can pitch both high in the strike zone and down on the strike zone. 2-0 the count. Can you play with crew and say today? Were you at Shannon's today? Strike called, two and one. Two one pitches line to center. Can Medina get there? No, it drops, and Pioneer has their first hit. Gavin Clem. I'm hitting 500 in the season. Runner at first with two outs for Caleb Sweet.
That ball gets away. Moving up to second is Clem. Fall off and the count is one and one. Jammed him. Ground ball, not hard hit. Stepping in front is Reinhardt's, and his throw to Huffman is in time. Boy, that was a nice play by Reinhardt's. From what we've heard, he hasn't played a lot of third base in his life, but he looked smooth there. No runs. One hit, no errors, one left. At the end of two and a half innings, Rochester leads Pioneer 4 to nothing, and we'll be right back on RTC TV4. The right fielder. Again, Elliott, Reinerts, and Huffman do here in the bottom of the third. Evan Elliott struck out his first time up. First pitch breaking ball way high. Again, kind of the headline, of, I think, of the first two innings at least was uh, Erickson came in having struck out 13 men in six and a third innings, but only had one strikeout in two innings today. Round ball to third. Couch can't handle it. And Elliott reaches base. It'll be an E5. So the leadoff man is on, and so Garmer in a little bit of trouble already. It'll bring up Tanner Reiner. It's a single and scored his first time up. First pitch, breaking ball, knocked down by Helton. 1 0 the count. Elliott like, like taking a pretty big lead over at first base. That's about as big a lead as you'll see in this ballpark. Pitches a strike. There goes Elliott. Throw. Not in time. That's a stolen base for Evan Elliott. Look at Gomer's cap just flew off. What now? Kind of one and one. Runner at second, nobody out. Pitch. Foul ball. One and two. Yeah, Steve Strickers are here today. It's very, very windy out here. He's operating the camera. The one, two. Line drive to left. That will drop for base hit. Rounding third is Elliott. He's going to try and score. The ball is cut off by Couch. Throw back to first. Out. Nice play by Couch. So it's a single and an RBI for Reinerts. Elliott scores to make it 5 0. That is a 7 5 3 put out at first base. That is correct. Five. Not five. Put it one there. Nobody on, one out, and the batter is Huffman. Pitch is high. Pitch by Gomer. Breaking ball over the outside corner, one and one. Pioneer softball team in action today. They are hosting Delphi. Pioneer played Delphi twice last year, split those two games. In the dirt, two and one. 
I checked yesterday. I've not seen a softball poll for this year. If, if there is a poll going around, I just haven't seen it. It's not where, where I usually look. It's I haven't been able to find it, but I would imagine Pioneer would be ranked in Class Two after I saw them the other day. They beat Argus nineteen to nothing in five innings. And there goes Mr. Gomer's cap again. Two two pitch to Huffman. Ball three. Full count. Foul ball, right side, out of play. Count hangs at three and two. This is the home opener here at Bob Copeland Field after two road games for the Zebras. Got him looking. Outside corner. Now batting the catcher, Jake Cipher. And then we have Jake Cipher. Jake is 0 for 1, but he drove in a run with his RBI grounder to second base his last time up, and that one is way high and outside, or way high and inside, actually. Nothing that Gomer throws goes straight. It's a lot of, a lot of off-speed stuff. Changing speeds and locations. Foul ball. Jake hitting 111 on the young season so far. He's one for nine, but he does have two RBIs. Pitch. Low and away. Two and one. Swing and a miss. Two and two. <laughs> Rochester's out hit Pioneer three to one so far. Pop up foul. Helton backing up on it and he makes the catch. And that retires the side. But Rochester scores one run in the bottom of the third. On one hit, there was one error, and nobody left. At the end of three innings, Rochester leads Pioneer 5 to nothing, and we'll be right back on RTC TV 4. Ball one, fastball up and in. Swing and a miss, one and one the count. But again, the Zebras pitching is going to get taxed just because of the schedule upcoming. And they've got games today, tomorrow, Saturday, Monday, and Wednesday. And of course, the whole 
point is to be have your best pitchers ready for Wednesday when they open TRC play at Whitco. Ball three, three and one. Clover Academy is always interesting. They're, you don't, their roster is always kind of uncertain, but as there's a base on balls, a leadoff walk for Erickson here in the top of the fourth. They bring up left fielder Owen Miller, who is really a dangerous hitter. Miller's three for 11 on the season, but again, all three of his hits have gone for extra bases. Inside. Now batting, Owen Miller. Throw over to first, safe. First time through the order, Zink had five strikeouts. So far, the second time through the order, no strikeouts. Swing and a miss by Miller. This is that the Val Jinx? I would say what isn't happening, and then something does happen. Well, it's still only strike one, so it's one and one. Breaking ball inside. Two and one. Pitch is low. Come on, man. He's a constant. I know. I told him he's trading to pick up better cards. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Count is now full. Pioneer has a road double header against West Central on Saturday. And then they begin conference play on Monday. Knox coming to town. The Knox coming to town on Monday. Again, the way the Hoosier North schedule is, again, they, they play 14 conference games in the Hoosier North. They play everybody twice. There are a few Saturday double headers, but there are also a lot of two game sets. Pioneer hosts Knox on Monday. They are at Knox on Tuesday. And then we've got a, a doubleheader at home against Triton next Saturday. Throw to first, and he's back. So a, a doubleheader at West Central this Saturday and a home doubleheader with Knox next, uh, home doubleheader with Triton next Saturday. And those two conference games against Knox in between. That pitch is low. That's another base on balls. First and second, nobody out after back-to-back -back walks here in the fourth. And Corey Good's going to make a mound visit. Now batting. Pitcher, Bretton Gomer. Bretton Gomer is the batter. Gomer started his day at first base. He's now pitching, and he's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Why is that? Yeah. Oh, okay. That one. Not going to do that again? No, we're playing all 16 tournaments. The weird oddity with Pioneer's schedule, they play Winnemac at home on April 26th, and they play at Winnemac on May 17th. Oh, yeah, windscreen in right field is just... <laughs> it has fallen off, or it's kind of disengaged itself from the rest of the fence, which kind of just gives you an idea of what it's like here. First and second, nobody out, Gomer the batter. But again, mostly in the Hoosier North, it's either du Saturday double headers or two game sets. You know, let them Monday, Tuesday, two game sets, a couple like Thursday, Friday things. And Zink throws a first pitch ball there. Yeah. 
And this is game four of a quote unquote road trip for Pioneer, and they're on the, they're on, again they're on the road again Saturday for that doubleheader at West Central. Count now one and one on Gomer. Pitch is low, knocked down by Cypher, and the count's two and one. Strike. Two and two. Talking about Wyatt Zider, I mean, they also graduated Daniel Reyes. Ezra Nadai Llewellyn both saw some varsity action baseball-wise. Obviously, they were tremendous in, on the track. Noah Pearson graduated. He was a big part of their team last year. Round ball to third. Reiner steps on the bag. Throws to first. Not in time. Huffman was able to kind of knock that down. Runners at first and second with one out now as Gomer grounds into a force out. Now batting number seven, Derek Duncan. Well, Reiners was really well positioned to feel that ground ball, but he had a long way to go to get to third base and then plant the foot. Having said that, he almost turned the double play. So first and second one out, and Derek Duncan, the second baseman, is the batter. Duncan walked his first time up. Popped up. Foul. Reinerts, can he get there? Yes, he does. He knew where he was in relationship to the fence, and he made the catch. First and second with two outs. And we, from what we had heard, he hadn't. Number nine, Andrew Help. He hadn't played a lot of third base, but he's looked pretty good there. Andrew Help and the catcher is the batter. He flew it to center his first time up. Noah Pearson graduated. Owen Mersch graduated. Hunter Kleppinger, who's a big factor on the mound. Line drive foul. Owen won the count. Mason Schnurpel graduated. Ethan Spencer graduated. He played a big role. Brenton Gomer's older brother, Tyler, graduated. So, yeah, there. Big graduation losses from a team that won 14 games last year. And, and of course, we talked about Wyatt Zider. Daniel Reyes graduated. Yeah, so... Coach Hardy trying trying to find new roles for a lot of these kids in his in his, in a, in his second year as coach. In there for, for a strike. I don't think Helton liked that call. He kind of gave up on it, buckled his knees, and it dropped in there. Let's see if Helton gets another breaking ball. He does, but it's in the dirt, one and two. And that one is high. Two and two. Solano on deck, hoping for a chance to bat this inning. Got him. Tied him up, and a nice job by Braden Zink to get out of a jam. Strikeout number six. For Pioneer in the fourth, no runs, no hits. No errors, two left. At the end of three and a half innings, Rochester leads Pioneer five to nothing. It'll be hunting, Campbell, and Young due for the Zebras when we come back on our T. First pitch. 
high. Strike one and one. Expected to be another chilly weekend. There's another thing we were talking about. It just seems to be the our weekends have been cold for about two straight months. Yeah. One and two the count. High is only in the 40s this weekend. Normal high this time of year is around 60. Comebacker. Gomer handles it. And throws to Sweet for the out. That'll bring up Hunter Campbell. Campbell fouled out to the catcher his first time up. One no. Inside. Two and zero. Oh. So we talked about Pioneers' graduation losses. Of course, Rochester lost <laughs> some great seniors themselves. When you talk about. Kyle Reinerts and Brock Beeler and Grant McCarter and Quinn Stasiak. Kane Lutz. 2 0. Strike. Where's Luke? 3-1 pitch. Strike call, 3-2. and two. Is that where he's at? I did not Play know baseball. that. 2-2. Uh -huh. Got him looking with a breaking ball. That was a good one. Strike number 2 for Gomer. Let's bring up the DH, Gavin Young. Gavin had an RBI single back in the second inning. And he later came around to score. Swing and a miss. Hi. Gavin's older brother, Zane, was a great player for the Zebras. on up playing at Manchester University. Low and away, two and one. Three and one. In the dirt. Goes off the shin guard of Helton, who will run it down. It's base on balls. Now batting number two, Tarek McLaughlin. Runner at first with two outs for Tarek McLaughlin. Tarek has fouled out to the right fielder and walked. He's 0 for 1. Wave and a miss. There goes Young, a new steal second. Tarek is one for seven on the season, but I think it's just a matter of time before he gets hot. Fisted out in the shallow left field, let a drop for a base hit. 
Young moves up to third. He'll take a wide turn. He'll hold. McLaughlin will also take a wide turn. And the Zebras now have runners in the corners with two out for Ethan Medina. Now batting number four, Ethan Medina. Nice hitting there by McLaughlin. I mean, he didn't crush the ball. He stayed back on it. They don't hold McLaughlin. He's on his way. Fly ball to left. Caught out there by Owen Miller to retire the side. For Rochester in the bottom of the fourth. No runs, one hit, no errors, two left. At the end of four, Rochester leads Pioneer 5 to nothing, and we'll be right back on RTC TV 4. First pitch, Solano is trying to bunt his way on. It's a good bunt. Zink has to go over and cover, and they get him. Nice play. Nice idea there by Solano. Lay down a bunt, and let's see if both the new pitcher and the new second baseman have their heads in the game, and they did. That was a nice bunt, just a nice play by both Hunting and Zink, who switched positions to start this inning. First pitch to Caden Couch is low, 1-0. Oh. Couch is 0 for 2. He struck out and grounded to second. Foul ball. One and one. When we do the next inning. TRC is going to be an interesting conference this year. I mean, Southwood suffered some graduation losses, but they also have some great players back from last year. They were ranked number one for much of the season. They won, they won the conference. They won their sectional. I think Peru will be very good. I mean, they're... Coach Brimberry was a great program there. But I know they suffered some graduation losses. Tippecanoe Valley is definitely going to be in the factor, you'd have to think. Owen Kirkenstein is as good a pitcher as there is in the conference. Base on balls. Runner at first with one out. Batting number 17, Gavin Clemmer. <laughs> Five walks so far from Rochester pitching through four and a third innings. Pickoff throw, and Couch is back. Gavin Clem is the batter. He is one for one with a walk and a single. Low and away. Throw over. Hmm. Swing and a miss. And the count is one and one. Hits Cypher in the head on one hop. He's okay, but he couldn't block that ball. It's a wild pitch. Runner at second with one out. 
Tippecanoe Valley has a pitcher named Cameron Manuel. He did something that I don't think I've ever heard of in a high school baseball game. Against Triton the other day, 15 up, 15 down, 15 strikeouts. A perfect game, and he struck out every batter he faced. And Valley beat Triton 16 to nothing in five innings. Three and one the count. That's the base on balls. There we go. <laughs> First and second with one out for Sweet. I think that ball one. Now batting. Caleb, sweet. Manchester has a young pitcher, Martinovitz, Martinovitz, Martinovich, who pitched really well against Caston the other day. He's going to be formidable. And you know the Wabash Apaches will be a very good team again. They they beat a pretty good Caston team, eleven to four the other day. Wabash, I think, will a lot of kids back from last year. Ball. Coach Holly does a great job there. And, of course, the sectionals at Wabash this year again. If there is a, maybe a dark horse team that not a lot of people are talking about, it might be North Miami. Really good pitcher, Braden Burns. Popped up. Foul. And it drops. Two and one. Well, we said any foul ball is going to, the wind is blowing left to right. And the wind is going to be a factor on anything hit in the air. And the wind has picked up again. Two and one. Popped up. This one's out of play. What now? The man, he's been around a long time. Yeah, he coached retired. He's going to retire? After a boom one year left. Okay. Two and two. Again, it fouled off, and the count hangs at two and two. I. This is going to be an interesting inning to see how Hunting gets to them. Again, this is his first career varsity pitching performance performance. He really made it. He made a nice play to retire Solano on a bunt attempt. He has since walked the last two batters. Ball three. North Miami, Braden Burns, a good pitcher. They got a good catcher in Parker Johnson. Ground ball to third. This could be two. Reinhardt steps on the bag. He throws. He oh, they got him. The throw by Reinhardt pulled Huffman off the bag, but he was able to feel it on one hop and tag. Sweet coming by for an inning-ending 5-3 double play. Corey Good was fired up after that. That was nice. For Pioneer in the fifth, no runs, no hits. No errors and one left at the end of four and a half innings. It is Rochester 5, Pioneer nothing, and it'll be Elliot Reinerts and Huffman when we come back on RTC TV 4, your number two pitcher. Elliot rips one just foul. Elliot is 0 for 2. He struck out and reached in an error. We're having some technical difficulties here with the music. I, know, I can't get it. I can't get it. I can't get it to stop. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying. I can't get it to stop. There we go. Put me on. 
<laughs> Took me a while to get through that. Okay. Well, the soundtrack is. Baseball has a certain rhythm to it, but that's not what they meant. <laughs> one and one the count to Evan Elliott. Evan 0 for 2 with a run scored. 1 and 2. Again, we had a four way tie for the Hoosier North Conference title last year, and Caston was in fifth place, and they were only a game back, so Caston returns a lot. Winnemac is loaded with seniors. I think they have nine seniors on, on the Winnemac's team. LaVille is very, very young. I think they have six freshmen. As uh, Elliott fouls off that pitch, it's one and two still. LaVille has six freshmen. They were really uh, talented freshmen. Zarnecki, there's a, a talented sophomore on that team named Jaden Lawrence. I think LaVille will be in the mix. Fouled off. You're free slushy. Yeah, you think, huh? You're free slushy. North Judson is of all the teams that shared the conference. North Judson is kind of the one we don't know a whole lot about, but they have a very good baseball tradition in North Judson for going back years. Ball, Ball two. Got him looking. Elliot now 0 for 3 on the day. Strikeout number 3 for Gomer. And that'll bring up Tanner Reinertz. Tanner's 2 for 2 with a pair of singles. Rochester has 4 hits and Tanner has half of them. Strike. Time out for a mon visit. Again, Pioneer starts conference play on Monday against Knox, and Rochester starts conference play on Wednesday against Whitco. Whoa. I don't know if that was, was that a sinker? Well, that might be the closest. We, he hasn't thrown a lot of fastballs. He's not, it's not like he's Gomer's challenging guy, but he's changing speeds and locations well. Ground ball, not a hard hit. Throw is not in time. E5. Runner at first with one out for Aaron Huffman. Again, nice pitch by Gomer. He got Reinerts off balance. Didn't hit it very hard. But the throw was kind of rut. You know, Reinerts was running as hard as he could on the first base line, forced the, a rushed throw and forced the error. 0-1 oh the count to Aaron Huffman. Huffman has walked and struck out, and he scored a run. 0-1. Rochester scored four runs in the second inning, two of the four runs scored on pass balls. Swing and a miss, but the ball's dropped. Reinerts will advance. Call that a pass ball. 0-2 the count. Well, was Rochester beat Pioneer in Royal Center last year, 19 to 17. It's been nothing like that today. Got him swinging in a breaking ball. Two outs, right? Two outs. 
Strikeout number four for Gomer. Now batting catcher, Jake Seifer. Jake Seifer, the batter. Seifer is grounded to second, and he's fouled to the catcher. Swings at the first pitch. Fouls it off. It is out of play. Going to the count. Ball inside, one and two. The teams that struggled in the Hoosier North last year were Triton and Culver. And it seems like you, you're going to have to be able to rack up wins against those teams. And then if you want to, and or at least it should be interesting to see if those two teams have made some improvement. Got him. Pitch was in the dirt. Out will have to be completed at first base, and it is to retire the side. Strikeout number five for Gomer. For Rochester in the fifth, no runs, no hits. One error, one left. At the end of five innings, Rochester leads Pioneer five to nothing, and we'll be back on RTC TV four. First pitch. From Hunting to Erickson is a swing and a miss. 0-1 the count. Two and one. Foul ball, one and two. And as we mentioned, in their two losses, Pioneer scored one run total. And they've been held scoreless so far into the sixth today. Two and two. It's not for lack of patience. They've drawn six walks. But not a, many great things have happened when they've swung the bat. Popped up foul. I wish we didn't give you a set of keys. <laughs> we might be able to find a maintenance staff member somewhere. Bob's been kind of this year. I know. Uh, yeah, that's what I heard. This year. Foul ball on the right field line, and the count hangs at 2-2. Two and two. Pioneer went 14 and 10 last year. They went 1 and 3 against TRC teams last year. The one win was over North Miami in the sectional semifinal, and that avenged a regular season loss to North Miami right in their last regular season game. And they also lost to Rochester, and they lost to Southwood in the sectional final. Three, two, right? No, that's, must have been ball four. That's what the ump said. Leadoff walk for Erickson here in the sixth. To bring up Owen Miller. Miller has struck out and walked. 
Way up and in. Now batting number four, Owen Miller. One, oh, right. hmm? Yes, one ball. Make umpire check baseballs. Some pitches talk. Corey Goods out to talk to the home plate umpire here. Let's see if he's going to make a pitching change or some sort of lineup change or what. Is he going to make a pitching change in the middle of a count? Sleep okay. <laughs> Talk about the okay, I'm Val since first we've got Damien up here in the booth and our hero is Steve Stricker. He's out on the field up on the ladder. That camera down the first baseline is windy conditions. So he's a little bit shaky. Now batting for Pioneer, Michael Searing. Swing and a miss. The batter is Michael Searing. He is 0 for 3 in the season. Searing's a junior. Counts on 1 and 2 on him. Gomer on deck. And my name's Val. Steve and I host a talk show called Talking Sports with Val. And it, we air it live every Friday at 2 p.m. You can see it on repeat on the art on the um, IHSA Champions Network. We talk high school sports on it. Softball, baseball. Girls tennis, boys golf, track, we do it all. 2-2. Two -two. Got him swinging. Now batting pitcher, Breton Gomer. First career strikeout for Luke Hunting. And it'll bring up the pitcher, Brenton Gomer. Gomer's 0 for 2. He struck out and grounded into a force out. Sometimes with young pitchers, you want to see how they handle working out of the stretch position, and Hunting's been able to handle it pretty well. Foul ball, 0 and 2. Sometimes you've got a you know a pitcher who's new to the varsity and he hasn't pitched in a varsity game before, and you get him on somebody on base, and then he then he goes from being nervous to being really really nervous. He, hi. And he doesn't want to think the coach isn't. He doesn't want the coach to think that he's not paying attention to the base runners. And Huffman holding on. Erickson. Foul ball, and the count hangs at one and two.
his cipher leg. I'm power talking Corey again. The umpire is having a chat with the Rochester bench. Corey Good is kind of walking out into the field. I'm not sure what he's talking about. He's having a little chat with Jake Cipher. Not sure what that was all about. Erickson still at first. One out. One two pitch from Hunting to Gomer. Hi. Ball three. You have to think Hunting will be aggressive here. Base on balls. First and second with one out. Courtesy runner coming in. Now batting number 44, Jake Erickson. That is not Duncan. That is Jake Erickson is the batter. Jake is a junior first baseman, or at least listed as a first baseman. He is up as a pinch hitter now for Duncan. Duncan went 0 for 1 while he was in there. Count is 1 and 1 to Jake Erickson. Rochester leads it here, 5 nothing. top of the sixth. The Pioneer is two on with one out. Foul ball. Rochester pitchers have walked eight in this game, but they haven't allowed a run. Got him looking. Two down. And they'll bring up the catcher, Andrew Helton. Now batting, number nine, Andrew Helton. Helton's flown out to center and he struck out. Inside. What's weird, Rochester pitchers have walked eight, and they've allowed one hit. So Pioneers had nine base runners, but they haven't gotten anybody to third base yet, much less score. They haven't even gotten anybody to third base. Well, they've had nine base runners. Grounder right side. Zink stays down on it and throws to first for the out to retire the side. Nice job again by Hunting to get out of trouble. No runs, no hits, no errors, two left. At the end of five and a half, it is Rochester 5 and Pioneer nothing. We'll be back on RTC TV 4. Same time tomorrow, 5 p.m. for a start with Culver Academy. Culver Academy beat Culver Community 31-1 to in five innings today. First pitch by Jake Erickson is in the dirt, 1-0.
Some sports news out of Rochester today. We reported it on Twitter. Rochester is expected to hire Joel Burris as their new girls basketball coach. School board meetings Monday when it is expected to become official. Joel Burris has been the boys basketball coach at Trinity Greenlaw in the last five years. Used to be the girls coach at Joel used to be the girls coach at Triton. This will be a second girls head coaching opportunity. Ground ball, short stop. Brayden Erickson throws to first for the out. There's for some short stops that might be a difficult throw, but not for Mr. Erickson. Strong, accurate arm. That'll bring up the left fielder, Hunter Campbell. First pitch ball to Campbell. Crowder to short. Nice smooth footwork by Braden Erickson, and he throws to first for the out. He's making tough plays look easy. Two up, two down. I'll let to bring up the DH, Gavin Young. No, nope, that's not Gavin Young. It's Braden Zink batting. Zink got flexed out at the start of the game. Now batting for the first time. So I guess this technically, I guess this technically isn't considered pinch hitting. But uh, Gavin Young, while he was in the game, went one for one with a single and a walk. And that hit he had back in the second inning, one of the big hits in this game. It was an RBI single. It was part of that four-run second inning. Zero and two the count to. Zinc. Well, uh, some dust in the umpire's eyes. And we're under a wind advisor until 8 p.m. Eastern. Breaking ball way up and in. Actually went behind Zinc's back. Brian Zink had a great year in the tennis court. He's the number one singles player. Chopper to third. Sweet to first. A 1-2-3 inning for Jake Erickson. And that retires the side. At the end of six innings, it is Rochester 5 and Pioneer 0. We'll be right back on RTC TV 4. Again, we talked with Corey Good before the season. He said just a lot of a lot of potential pitchers on this roster. Obviously, again, Huffman and McLaughlin are the two most experienced. Swing and a miss. Interesting thing about the Rochester baseball schedule: all four Wabash County teams will come here. Strike over the outside corner, zero and two. And McConaughey comes here too. So the five longest, you could argue that the five longest road trips in the TRC and Rochester won't have to make any of them. Got him swinging, high heat. <laughs> That'll bring up Caden Couch. Now hitting Caden Couch. Oh and one. Foul ball. Huffman chasing. It's out of play. Oh and two. 
was that Solano who was the last batter? Or That was Brian Gluth who led off the inning. He was the one who struck out. Strikeout number one for Reinerts. And he's heading the count 0 and 2 here. Just high. Pretty sharp looking slider there. This is. Looks like Tanner Reinerts has been on a pitching mound before. The 1 2. Fouled off again. Foul off, and the count hangs a one and two. Interesting baseball game in the area coming up tomorrow night with Bream and traveling to Tippecanoe Valley. That's a, that's a 7 p.m. start. So you got Culver Academy here at 5 p.m. and then Bremen at Valley tomorrow night at 7. Foul ball, 1 and 2. So from our current 24 mile per hour winds, they can go up to 40. Steve's probably having fun. <laughs> ball 2. Base on balls. Runner at first with one out. Kutch is 0 for 2, but he's walked twice now. That'll bring up Gavin Clem. He's 1 for 1 with a single and two walks. Foul ball on one. Winnemag has defeated Oregon Davis 13 to one tonight. Winnemag begins their conference play on Monday. They're at Culver, and they have a home game with Culver on Tuesday. One and one. Off throw, not, not in time. Rochester pitchers have walked nine in this game. They have been playing with fire the whole way. Swing and a miss. One and two. But Pioneer only has one hit. The one hit came off the bat of this guy, Gavin Clem. Gavin's a senior, very good three-point shooter on their basketball team. Got him. Two down. Now batting for Pioneer, number 23, Caleb Sweet. That'll bring up Caleb Sweet. Caleb has, is 0 for 3. He has struck out looking. He's grounded a third, and last time up he grounded into a 5-3 double play. Oh and one. And if 
That, that had to be one of the biggest plays in the game, the double play that Sweet grounded into back in the fifth. That was a great dig at first base by Huffman. Throw over, not in time. Inside, gets away. We'll call that a pass ball. Runner at second with two outs. Count is one and one on Sweet. Swing and a miss. One and two. The wind is windy now as it has been at any time during the game. The one two pitch. Foul ball. Again, my name is Val Sitsuris, and I not only talk about sports, I write about sports also. I have a website called rtc4sports.com. RTC4, the number four, sports.com. Cover seven different high schools, these two being two of them. Got him swinging. Ott will have to be completed at first base, and it is. Zebras win. Yeah, you can. And in his first career pitching performance, in his first inning of work, Tanner Reinert strikes out three batters. For Pioneer in the seventh, no runs, no hits, no errors, one left. Rochester beats Pioneer 5 to nothing, and the Zebras are 3-0 and on the young season. With the loss, Pioneer, Pioneer drops to 2-3. and three.